what's going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning about the ui color picker controller for ui kit usage in your app so the name probably gives it away as well as a thumbnail of this video you can use this component here that'll pop up when i tap on the button to pick a color it is available natively as of ios 14 and it works really great so we can go ahead and pick any color here and you can see in the background actually if i move this down that the color of the primary view is in fact changing. We're going to talk about, you know, how you can control uh, the behavior of this in terms of using the delegate as well as restricting opacity. Um, and we also have these cool little options here to either use the sliders, the color spectrum here, or use the uh, prior grid that you saw right here. So uh, if that sounds good to you, make sure you start by dropping a like down below. Helps out a lot. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe for iOS and Swift videos. That said, let's get into some color pickers in iOS 14 and your apps. All right, let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS, and let's go ahead and call this project a color picker. You want to go ahead and make sure your language is Swift, your interface storyboard, even though we'll work programmatically, and your lifecycle UI kit. Go ahead and continue and save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. Cool, once uh, Xcode decides to stop being slow, we'll go ahead and uh, expand our Xcode window here. Let me go ahead and close up this right panel since we're not gonna be needing it. And we'll jump straight away into our view controller file here. Also go ahead and select a simulator. Let's go with the 12 Pro Max and let's get into it. So to show the color picker, we wanna go ahead and add a button on screen. So right here at the bottom of view to load, I'm gonna go ahead and create a pretty basic uh, UI button and just we're going to go ahead and center it so go ahead and give it a 0, 0 x and y a width of 200 and perhaps a height of 50. Let me also go ahead and add this guy as a sub view. We want to go ahead and give it a nice background color of system green. I'll also go ahead and give it a title and the title will be select color for a state of normal. And let's see, let's go ahead and just center this and make sure our actual button is appearing on the screen. And finally, we want to go ahead and attach a target and selector to the button to do something when the user taps on it. So did tap uh, select color. And in this function, we're going to actually um, show the color picker, which we'll get to momentarily. So let's go ahead and create this uh, function down here, which will serve as the selector just like that, just make sure you annotate it at Objective-C. That'll ensure that uh, you can use it as a selector and you won't get any weird errors. So go ahead and hit Command-R to build and run. And we see our simulator popped up here. Let's just make sure we can see that uh, color picker uh, button in the middle of the UI. And once we can, we'll talk about the UI color picker controller. So bear with our simulator here, sometimes the First, uh, first run just ends up being slow. There is our button, looking awesome. Let's go ahead and talk about the color picker controller. So um, basically this view controller is available for iOS 14, so key call out. And it, it actually wraps a Swift UI color picker under the hood. So let's go ahead and create a color uh, picker VC. And this is going to be a UI color picker uh, view controller. And basically you can just go ahead and create one of these. It doesn't take any parameters. We're gonna to want to present this view controller. So we're gonna say present color picker VC animated true. And the other thing that we wanna go ahead and do is assign one property off of this. And that is the delegate because that is how we're gonna actually get the selected color out. So we're gonna assign self as the delegate and it's gonna start giving us an error because we need to conform to this guy up here. So you can conform to the UI picker view controller delegates. And I believe this has uh, one or two required functions. Um, actually, it looks like they're not required. It looks like they are optional, but if we command click into this, you'll see there are two functions in here. One is color picker view controller did select color. And the other one is did finish. So let's go ahead and implement both of those. I'll do them right here. So color picker, um, if you actually just type in color picker, the autocomplete will help you out in giving you those two functions. So let's take a look at these. So the did finish just gives you back the view controller. 
And the other one here uh, is basically called every time a color is picked. And off of the view controller itself, you can get the current selected color by saying view controller dot selected color, just like that. And let's copy and paste that right here. And before we move along any further, let's go ahead and give this a run. Let's see what happens when we tap on this. As expected, we should get this really cool looking color picker, which is honestly really nice that it's built into the uh, UI kit framework at this point. So let's talk about the difference between these two functions, what you would wanna do in here. So one of these is called every time a color is picked, hence the name did select color. And the other one is called, you know, once the user actually finished, which uh, I would assume implies they go ahead and uh, hit the X up here, which will close this out. So the there are two options in terms of what we want to do here, right? We want to change the background color of our primary view. Let me actually collapse this so we can see the code side by side. Um, so we can either uh, change the color every time the user selects a color, or we can wait for the controller to finish before changing it. So let's take a look at both. So in this case, I'm going to say view background color will be color and go ahead and give this a run. And now it's a little difficult to see, but if we go ahead and let's say select this nice blue color, you can see the little uh, up here, this little line, which is the view behind this controller it's already changed. So as I change the color in here, you can see that it is indeed changing um, behind the scenes. And we can of course dismiss it and you'll see that that color persists. Now, however, if we don't wanna do it in here, let's say we wanna ignore this function. Let me just, uh, we can just leave it actually. We could also do that in here. We can go ahead and put in the exact same code. And now what I suspect is going to happen is we can go ahead and select something in here and it's not gonna change. Uh, until we go ahead and finish. So let's see, there we go. Once we go ahead and hit the X, you'll see that the color will change. But as I select in here, it's not actually changing on every selection. It only changes once we finish on the controller. Now, one actual little uh, edge case you just saw there is if you select something and the user swipes it away, it doesn't actually trigger this delegate function. So there is an edge case of um, the did finish function not getting called if you select and swipe away. Now there are two different ways you can combat this. Uh, the first one is just make your uh, controller not swipeable. So you can go ahead and do is modal in presentation and go ahead and assign this to true. And this will allow, rather this will restrict the user from swiping it away. Uh, modally, so if we go ahead and let's say tap on, let's tap on uh, this nice orangish color here, and let's say I'm done and I'm a user and I just want to swipe it away. Ah, it looks like actually we can still swipe it away. So let's see what's going on. So this should not be swipeable, but it actually looks like it is interesting. So I take it back. So instead of doing uh, is modal in presentation, um, you just want to handle your edge case of here then. So perhaps you want to store the color here and use another delegate to figure out if the user swiped it away because that's a pretty uh, unfortunate edge case. So that's the premise of a color picker controller in a nutshell. Um, in terms of assigning this and this function or the other, there's really no performance implication aside from the fact that the user might redundantly pick different colors. So you're doing a lot of work, but it's really not an issue. Um, the one thing that I'll call out before wrapping up this video here is this color picker not only supports this uh, grid to select from, but you probably saw the options up here for a spectrum as well as uh, the sliders here for uh, RGB. You can also let the user, you know, uh, click in here and type in a uh, RGB value, which is really cool. And then there's also these colors down here with an opacity filter. The color picker controller, I believe, also has an option to uh, restrict opacity. So um, there should be an option on here. Let's see, there is selected color, delegate, and then there is supports alpha. So supports alpha, either true or false, will um, tell your picker controller, should we allow the user to change opacity? Because you know, whatever design you're picking, for example, the user wants to pick a theme color, if they pick a blue color and say that the alpha here is 0%, it'll end up being uh, totally transparent, AKA uh, you're not gonna see a color, which is kind of silly. So, you know, you have that option available to you if you need it. And uh, that's really it. That is the premise of a color picker controller. 
really awesome component to bring into your uh, application, really, really works well, and also really looks great on iPad in a form sheet style presentation. And once again, only available iOS 14 and onwards. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you haven't dropped a like down below, don't forget to do so. It helps out a lot. Comment if you are using this component. If you're more into Swift UI and using it over there, if you are into Swift UI, I've got a dedicated color picker video on that as well. Take a look at the channel and subscribe to stick around for daily iOS and Swift uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.